So welcome everyone. Um, we are gonna go ahead and get started tonight. We have someone with us tonight, very familiar with the, the seed office and, and what we do. She's had a number of roles with us. So we have Emily Rogers, who is currently a graduate student here at Virginia Tech. I don't know when you, you know, I hopefully you'll introduce yourself, Emily, and you know, spend just a minute on kind of who you are and how you got here. Um, so she is here tonight to talk about some of SEED's undergraduate programs, uh, in particular, our Galileo and Hypatia living learning communities, which are really one community. You're Hypatia if you're a woman, Galileo if you're a man, but um, housed in one hall and, and uh, a lot of joint programming, um, as well as our undergraduate uh, peer mentoring program. And sorry. You. Uh, our undergraduate peer mentoring program. And I think, Emily, are you going to, no, you no, you don't need to talk about STEP on this one. We had um, Christina talk about STEP last week. So I am going to go ahead and turn it over to Emily. All right. Thank you, Dr. Lester. Uh, so like Dr. Lester said, and you can see on my screen, uh, my name is Emily Rogers. I am a first year graduate student. Um, I just graduated from Virginia Tech in May 2023, so almost a year ago now, which feels a little crazy, um, but my major was biomedical engineering, and I'm still in the biomedical engineering program now uh, for graduate school. So um, in addition to being a graduate student, oh, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, so if anybody watching is also from Pittsburgh, yay. Um, and yeah, I'm also a graduate assistant for the Center for the Enhancement of Engineering Diversity, which is kind of the big umbrella organization that helps run events like this one, as well as the programs I'm going to talk to you about today. So without further ado, we'll get started. Um, so again, the Center for the Enhancement of Engineering Diversity, that's really our big umbrella organization, but I'll talk a little bit more about what that is uh, in the coming slides. So first, who are we? We were founded in 1992 as the Office of Minority Engineering Programs, and our goal as an entire umbrella is to really increase the numbers of underrepresented minority students and underserved population students earning engineering degrees from VT. So that was our original goal. We're still holding true to that today. And we have different programs targeted for African Americans uh, in engineering, women in engineering, Hispanic or Latina, Latino students, in engineering, first generation students, and transfer students. Uh, so again, really our goal is to help promote these students, give them a support system, and provide additional resources to help them really thrive in the engineering programs and help them earn that degree. Uh, so our biggest undergraduate programs, the ones I'm going to talk to you about tonight, are Galileo, Hypatia, and our peer mentoring program. Uh, and again, Galileo and Hypatia are those living learning programs. Um, and then peer mentoring is a separate program that has some similar facets to it. So I'll cover what each of those are um, as we go through this. So starting off with Galileo and Hypatia, these are ones that people get really excited about. So I'm excited to share information with you. Um, I would, did want to go back real quick to my roles within SEED. So kind of explaining how I'm tied into all of this. Uh, my first year on campus, 2019, I was a freshman student in Hypatia. Uh, then moving past that, I was a peer mentor in that pro in the peer mentoring program for two years. And then I moved into a peer leader position, which is essentially the mentors of the peer mentors. And then lastly, now here I am as a graduate assistant, and I'm working a lot more closely with Galileo and Hypatia students now. So it's all come full circle to where I was uh, in my first semester. All right, so here's the general overview. Hypatia is targeted for women in engineering, Galileo targeted for men in engineering. Uh, Hypatia was founded in 2001 and Galileo in 2005, but really our goal with these programs is to help students transition from high school to college, especially within the College of Engineering. Uh, so you'll probably hear the phrase that college uh, courses and college culture is a lot different from high school. And sometimes that transition is pretty difficult for students moving away from home, um, and just adjusting to the new difficulty of courses in engineering. So that's what we're trying to highlight um, and really support you with. 
So it is a living learning community, which means that all of our students live together. And starting in fall 2024, this will be housed in Pritchard Hall. So all of our students will live in Pritchard together. Uh, and the way that works between the two programs, um, we have some floors designated for only female students, some for only male students. It really depends on kind of where you're more comfortable. We also have a few floors right now that are split clean down the middle, um, women on one side, men on the other. So wherever you choose to live, um, that information will be made available to you before you select which room you're living in, um, but it's definitely something to consider. Uh, we also have, so since all the students are living together in Pritchard, uh, that's a really great way for students to start to bond with each other. So you're living with a bunch of other engineering students. And in the first year of college, pretty much all of our engineering students end up taking the same courses. So it's really helpful to, especially I found it really helpful to have my neighbors in the building, as well as my roommate, my friends, all taking the same classes. So when I was freaking out about the first chem exam, so were they. And we were able to form these really great study groups, you know, kind of do practice problems together. Um, there's a number of study lounges within the building as well. So we really took advantage of those spaces and um, kind of got through that first year together. You know, these classes can be somewhat challenging for people uh, depending on where your strong suits are. So it was definitely great for me. Uh, I wasn't as strong in chemistry maybe, and I had a lot of friends who took a lot of those classes in high school. So it was a great way for me to kind of learn new information and have uh, friends to get through these classes with. So that was something that was really important to me. And it's also just a great way to find like-minded peers and talk about different fields of engineering. So when I came into college, I was between a couple different majors and having others who could talk about their passion for aerospace or talk about their passion for environmental engineering, uh, different things like that really helped me to make a decision and see uh, additional sides of it that I wasn't always looking at. So finding those like-minded peers was super helpful. Um, and also just having a community of people really driving to succeed in engineering was a big factor for me going into this. Another benefit of living in the dorm together is that we also have access to something called the Invent Studio, and I'll talk a little bit more about it later. Uh, but essentially what the space is, uh, is a maker space within the dorm. So all of the students living together in the dorm, instead of going across campus to work on a project or get something done, uh, we actually have the space in the building with you. So that's things like power tools, laser cutters. We've got uh, CNC machines, which do a lot of cool engraving stuff. We have soldering irons. If you're into electronics, that's pretty helpful there. Um, but yeah, it's just it's a great space to learn how to use that equipment. We offer trainings. Uh, on how to use those power tools, the laser cutters, things like that. Um, so it's a great space to learn how to use those uh, under the supervision of upperclassmen who have used these tools extensively and know what they're doing. Um, and it's also a great space to work on personal projects or projects for class. So it doesn't just have to be, I have to do this for an assignment, I can go use the studio now. It is also about, you know, I want to make this little birthday present for my mom, or I want to make a new ornament for our Christmas tree. Uh, you can absolutely use the space to work on anything personal like that as well. Uh, so another big part of the program is our fall seminar. It's really a course that goes along with the living learning program. So it's a two credit course. It meets once a week. And really what we focus on here are a lot of different lectures to help you start to learn these foundational engineering skills, right? So the first one or the first bullet point there is personal growth. Uh, to help you with this, we go through different workshops on how to communicate as an engineer and how to send an email professionally, how to get through um, kind of the, oh gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? Career fairs that we have going on in that first year. And I'll also highlight a couple of those later. Um, but again, just working on developing yourself as an engineer and building those foundational skills that I found still really benefit me now. Uh, we've also got a lot of professional development topics. So, for example, one of your assignments in the course is to make your resume and have it reviewed by either a peer or somebody at our Career Resource Center. Um, so that was, again, really beneficial to me. I still use the same kind of format and template for my resume now. Um, so 
that's a really helpful topic. Uh, they also cover things like LinkedIn and connecting with others in your field, you know, reaching out to somebody who has the job that you want to get and seeing how they got there. Uh, it's a really important part of becoming an engineer. And so we really try to cover that in that first semester with that two credit class. And again, this is only in the fall, um, not the spring. Uh, aside from that, we've got academic resources from within that class. Um, and really what we're trying to do here is make sure that you know that you have access to these. So things like free tutoring that's offered by the College of Engineering. We've got um, obviously private tutors if you need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one help. We have just really making sure that you know how to reach out to your academic advisor and professors and talking to them in office hours and how do you go about that. So the real, you know, kind of meat of the class is understanding how to be an engineer uh, and how to be an engineering student and get the help that you need um, to kind of grow into that engineer. So super helpful. Um, and I think I'll talk a little bit more about some of the events that go with that. So another portion of the class kind of, but also more of just a portion of living in the community is the student networking events. And we have 10 student-led committees, uh, which I'll also talk about later, but we have 10 student-led committees that create events for our students to go to, uh, to really dive into some more niche topics. So for example, we have our academic committee and before those big common time exams, they'll put on a big chemistry test review session where you can go and ask your questions to an upperclassman student. You can do practice problems together, uh, kind of work through maybe a practice know. test. Um, so that's the academic committee. They also host um, kind of study hours where they'll just help you with your homework. You know, if you're having trouble getting through an assignment, you can sign up for the event uh, and go kind of work through it with somebody. So that's just one example of those networking events for professional development. We offer a lot of help on resume review, um, working on your LinkedIn, talking about time management, things like that that are really crucial to your professional development. We offer as events to our students, uh, again, working through those topics with one of our upperclassmen students. We have social events. So these tie into um, really connecting with others in the community and kind of de-stressing from the academics and professional things. You know, we also want to make sure that our students are well balanced. So those social events really aim to help you connect with others in the building uh, and also connect with those upperclassmen students. And then service learning, connecting with our environment and the community around us. So Blacksburg is a really great community. It's a small town, so it's pretty tight knit. But having our students be involved and active in that community is something that's important to us as well. Um, so those are other events that we offer. And then also typically as a part of our professional development events, uh, we have a lot of faculty and corporate partner connections. So for example, a company is coming to us in a couple weeks to do a panel kind of interview with their representatives, as well as a presentation on how to nail an internship and really make those good connections. So we definitely have opportunities for you to connect with those corporations, look for opportunities to grow that relationship, maybe into a future internship or co-op co uh, later in your college career. Uh, and another fun way that we do this is an event called Slush Rush, which all of our students go to at some point during that first year. Uh, but essentially what it is, we have a bunch of faculty and corporate partners come to the dorm. Uh, and for an hour or so, you talk to them, talk about their research, talk about their jobs, talk about how they got there. Uh, and it really gives you an opportunity to ask a lot of questions to those faculty and corporate partners. And the reason we call it Slush Rush is because we also serve slushies during that event. So it is a little bit fun, a little bit more low key, but also helps you practice those networking skills. So that's just some of our networking events. Um, and these are done in both the fall and the spring. And then next up is the peer mentoring aspect of the community. So this is within the community. I'll talk about peer mentoring as a separate program. Um, on the next few slides, I know it's getting a little confusing, but peer mentoring within Galapatia, uh, you have a Galapatia mentor who is actually an upperclassman who lives just down the hall from you. So they're always there when you need them. Uh, but this is for the first 10 weeks of the fall semester and then monthly afterwards. So once a week for those first 10 weeks, you'll meet with your mentor and then a small group of other students who live around you. 
and talk about things like staying on track with deadlines. You know, when do I need to request my classes for the spring? How do I know what classes to take? Um, and also talking about topics about mental health and making sure that you are keeping yourself balanced and um, kind of processing this whole transition into college. So really our goal with the program is to build that support system and really foster those relationships between you and the people you're living around and also helping you connect with an upperclassman who's been through something similar. You know, they were, a lot of them are sophomores, so they were in your shoes about a year ago and how did they get through it? Uh, so this was a really great resource for me. My Hypatia mentor was awesome. Um, if I ever had questions about you know, how do I connect with professors? How do I connect with people? Uh, you know, what kind of organization should I look into? That was the person that I was able to turn to. Um, so it's definitely a really great resource to have. And then following those first 10 weeks of weekly meetings, those ones are a little bit more structured. Um, afterwards, you meet once a month. These are a little bit more fun uh, activities. So you have um, more like social events to just reconnect with your mentor, reconnect with your group to really keep that relationship going. And applications for these programs opened last month. So they're open now, I believe, and we're currently going through all of those. Uh, but I will say that if you're interested in living there in the fall, I would apply early or as early as you can. Uh, Galileo does fill up a little bit more quickly than Hypatia. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, in terms of numbers of students served, we have 30 members of our Galapatia leadership team. So the Galapatia leadership team doesn't necessarily live in the building. Some of them choose to, some of them don't. Uh, but these students essentially oversee the committees and the mentors to help uh, kind of facilitate those events, facilitate those programs, talk about meeting topics, things like that. And these are all previous Galapatia students. Uh, we also have 130 upper class mentors and committee members. So these are the students that are directly interacting with you as the upperclassmen running these events and being your peer mentor. And then lastly, this year we had 666 freshmen, about twice as many Galileans as Hypatians. So the Galileo program is a little bit bigger. Uh, and the Hypatia program is a little bit smaller, but in total, our community is made up of 826 undergraduate students. And then obviously we have the SEED graduate assistants and our SEED full-time staff uh, that are also really valued members of our community. Uh, this is going back to the Invent studio. So these are just some pictures from inside our space. We've got soldering irons. Uh, you can see people on the bottom left there working on a group project. Uh, but again, I want to emphasize that we offer trainings on how to use these. So you're not just walking in and using a bandsaw without knowing what it does or feeling comfortable using it. We have upperclassmen students there to train you on how to use those uh, that equipment. And once you've been trained, you're free to come use it whenever you need to. Uh, we also offer 3D printing so you can submit your print to our online queue and then a graduate assistant will print that for you just to keep things nice and organized and make sure everybody has access to it when they need. Um, but that's another great opportunity. A lot of students in their first semester have a design project that will require them to use a makerspace to make something for this project. And a lot of our students take advantage of the resources then. Uh, but again, like I said earlier, a lot of students will also work on personal projects. So I've had people come in to knit a sweater or, um, gosh, a lot of people come in to make friendship bracelets and jewelry. So little things like that are also available in the studio. And it's a really great resource to have right there in your dorm building. So moving now to the peer mentoring program, kind of switching gears. Uh, again, Galapatia does have peer mentoring built into that program, but now we're talking about the peer mentoring program itself. Uh, so this is a separate program with one graduate student coordinator. Then underneath that graduate student coordinator, we have seven undergraduate students who are our peer leaders. So they are pretty much the front row in that picture on the bottom uh, from a couple of years ago. But these peer leaders are essentially the mentors to the mentors. So each peer leader will have a group of about 10 mentors that they oversee. And then each group of mentors or each mentor will have their own group of first year engineering students. But these mentors are split into four mentoring teams. So we've got AORA, which is Academic Hispanic Outreach Alliance. 
BEST, which is our Black engineering support teams, WEST, which is our women in engineering support teams, and then GUEST, which is our general undergraduate engineering support teams. So anybody can join GUEST if you feel like you want a group uh, that maybe aligns more with one of those other demographics. You are welcome to join whichever one you choose to. Uh, we have students that choose to have a mentor that maybe resonates with them a little bit more. So when I was a freshman, or when I was a mentor, sorry, I oversaw a West mentoring team, and that was me and six freshman girls who all were able to connect with each other over being a woman in engineering. So that's definitely something to consider what you think your preference might be. Um, and yeah, obviously the mentees are the first year engineering students. Um, and this program doesn't have an application, but you can just sign up for it. Um, and we won't turn anybody away. We have lots of space. So definitely something to consider. The program structure, it's very similar to the first half of the Galileo peer mentoring. Um, but we have a 10 week mentoring program where you will meet with your peer mentor and your mentor group of other mentees uh, once per week, you'll all get together. And throughout the program, we do two free meals and three large seed sponsored events. So the first one of those is Osho. I'll talk about that in, I think maybe the next slide. Um, and the other two, the first one is Expo Preview. So, or Expo Prep, sorry, I get the two mixed up. So Galapagos students partake in something called Expo Preview, which is like a mini version of our engineering expo, which is this huge three-day career fair with 300 engineering companies. Um, it's the second largest student-run career fair in the country. It is a massive event. So that can be really overwhelming for freshmen. So we have a smaller version of that available to our Galapagos students. For peer mentoring, we do something a little bit um, more focused on the preparation side of things. So we bring in a couple company sponsors. They'll talk to you about talking to recruiters, how to nail your elevator pitch, things like that. Um, really questions that you might have before going into it. Um, but again, Galapagos kind of does more of that practice round. Um, and then the other large seed sponsored event is called Major Scoop. So Major Scoop is a uh, big night where everybody gets a bowl of ice cream and then you go around and talk to upperclassmen, professors, grad students from that major and learn a little bit more about it. So a lot of our students in that first year are still figuring out what their engineering major should be. And that's a great way to start making those connections, learning about what each major actually does uh, and talking to the students to hear their experience. So those are the two of the three large seed sponsored events. And again, I'll cover the next one. Uh, but another benefit of this program is that we have really small groups. So about nine mentees per mentor. One year I had a group of, I think, eight, and the next year I had a group of about six. So really small groups. Um, and the goal of that is to help students bond and make friendships. Um, but you're also able to be paired with a mentor of your intended major instead of kind of where you're living in the building. So we try to match you up based on interest. Uh, the year that I had the six freshmen women students, uh, they were all interested in biomedical engineering, which is my major. So I was really able to help them make an informed decision about whether biomedical or chemical engineering was the right choice for them. Uh, and they were able to connect over that similarity too. So that was pretty helpful um, for them. And I've still kept in contact with them today. It's been a really great way to kind of see them grow throughout that biomedical engineering career. And it's super crazy to me that, um, you know, to watch some of them follow in similar activities that I did uh, when I was uh, in their year. So definitely a great program to get involved with. Um, I would say that if you're not maybe fully ready to commit to living in the engineering dorm for a full year, or maybe you are not super sure about um, how much time you wanna put into the community and how much time you wanna put into the program, uh, this one is not really a commitment. Um, it is a commitment, but it's not something that we will hold you to, you know, two weeks into the program, we'll send you an email and say, are you enjoying the program or do you want to leave? And if you want to leave, you can sign yourself out, no questions asked. So if you're looking for something on maybe a little bit more of a low key scale um, and having kind of the freedom to live in any dorm on campus, maybe you have a roommate back home that you are already thinking of living with. Uh, and they're not going to be an engineer, maybe this program's a better fit for you. 
But really, I would say that if you don't choose to live in Galileo or Hypatia, which is obviously a great opportunity for support systems and stuff, I would definitely sign up for this one. Um, again, just having that support system to get you through that transition from college or from high school into college made a huge difference for a lot of students um, and really helps you make those connections early on. So OSHO, uh, which is our engineering opportunity show, is that third of the large seed sponsored events I mentioned earlier. This is the first Saturday before classes, um, but we have nearly 60 College of Engineering organizations come to Goodwin Hall to talk to our students. So this is only available to Galileo, Hypatia, and peer mentoring students, but it helps you get involved before the start of classes. We've got design teams there, which are our hands-on, you know, apply what you learned in class outside of class um, organizations. They go to national and international competitions. And if you check out the Wear Lab website, you can look at a bunch of those design teams, but they love to recruit freshmen. Uh, because the freshmen really have time to grow with the organization. So that's a great way to start getting involved there. We've also got a professional societies present. So each major has their own professional society. For me, that was the Undergraduate Biomedical Engineering Society. We have the American Society of Civil Engineers, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. So these large um, national organizations all have a small chapter here at Virginia Tech. And it's a great way to start working on professional development and networking within the context of your own major, as opposed to just engineering in general. And we also have some larger organizations that span all of the engineering majors uh, and are really more focused on demographic groups. So that's things like the National Society of Black Engineers, the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. We have the Society of Women Engineers. Um, those are just some of the, uh, the larger ones, but... Again, nearly 60 organizations come to this OSHO so that you can start learning about them and get involved before classes even start. So it's a great way to get a jump on that. And here are some pictures from OSHO. So we have a portion outside. Some of these design teams pretty much design an entire car. So that doesn't exactly fit inside the doors of Goodwin Hall. Um, but it is a great way, again, to see what they're working on, see what they do, what each organization is all about. Um, and we have a lot of students attend every year, so it's a really busy event, uh, but it's a lot of fun getting to connect, again, with some of those upper class students who are there to recruit new people for their organization or design team, whatever it may be. So definitely an exciting event uh, that our students love to get involved with. And that's pretty much all I have. Um, those are the, the big key points of these organizations uh, and these programs specifically through SEED. And now I'm open to taking questions. You can either put them in the chat. I will hopefully see them. Um, I wanted to address one topic because yeah. typically we get questions about this. So I'm interested how do I apply? So there's actually two different ways of applying. So if you have not yet accepted your offer, you can still apply to Hypatia or Galileo. It can be an important consideration for some students. You know, am, you know, am I going to get in? Am I going to have that support? Um, and so you can go through just a, a survey instrument. It's not through housing itself. Um, if you if you go through that way and you fill it out, you are not bound to it. It's almost a little bit more like holding the space um, to to be in there. Um, you can do that at you know as soon as you have an offer, all of the early action offers have gone out, and the regular decision offers will be going out. I, I believe in the next couple of weeks. So um, you can go ahead and sign up for Galileo and Hypatia now. As Emily said, Galileo in particular fills up very, very quickly. Um, and if you're a young man who wants a space, uh, I would recommend at least getting that, that application in as soon as possible. Big perk, if you were part of any of our SEED pre-college programs, so if you did Pathways or CTEC or BVT or RISE, um, there is an essay question on the application itself. 
you do not have to write the essay. We know you, we had you on campus. If there were issues, we would know about it. Um, so you can literally in that application spot, you can just say attended BVT, attended RISE, um, and you will get an offer through that system. Um, you're again, you're kind of already accepted because we know who you are. We know that we want you to be a part of the community. Um, the second, if you have already accepted your offer of admissions, then you go through the official Virginia Tech Star Res housing system. Even if you go through the first avenue where you haven't accepted your offer and it's kind of like holding your spot, you will still need to go through the official Star Res acceptance platform. Um, and that's where you can, you know, get a roommate, look around, see if there's somebody that matches with you. Um, select Hypatia or Galileo, um, and then, you know, go through that process and get the official offer so you're in the housing system. Um, and again, on the essay there, just I attended whatever program it was, um, and you will not have to complete the essay question. So I know I typically get a lot of questions about that and just wanted to um, address that before we moved on to other questions. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Dr. Lester, I'm not totally sure about current information on this next question. Uh, okay. I couldn't remember what happened for me, but I don't know if it's still the same. But if you apply earlier, do you get to pick your room sooner for Hypatia? Um, Emily, whatever you know is more than I Okay. <laughs> so from what I remember, I think it was more about when you accepted your offer to live in the living learning community rather than how early you applied. Um, so I would take that into consideration, but again, there are a lot of rooms in Pritchard and it doesn't make a huge difference all the time on where exactly you are. So I will say that I was probably in the middle of the pack when I got to pick my room, um, and I still got exactly where I wanted to be. So I would say that it's not a, a huge factor, um, in kind of getting to pick that room, but it was for me, I think based off of when I actually accepted that offer. And then the next question is, do you know what percent of women engineers live in Hypatia? I don't off the top of my head. I could do some really quick math, but I can't do that kind of math in my head. Uh, the College of Engineering itself is 24% women. Um, so that's in the entire college, assuming that that number um, is pretty similar with our number of students in the College of Engineering per year. So that one is around 2,000. Um, I'm going to guess that, oh gosh, 25% of 2,000 is math I should be able to do. I literally, I'm doing it on the calculator as you talk. Okay. So I come up with roughly 48% of the women live in Hypatia. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's about half. Yeah. Um. And I will say that a lot of the ones that don't do end up on those West teams. We get a lot of students interested in either West or GAS as part of peer mentoring. Um, are Digirati and Hypatia both LLCs in Pritchard? Yes. Um, so they are kind of in different wings. So if you are a if you are a Hypatia student, you will live kind of in a Hypatia wing. Uh, and then Digirati is also in the building, but they are kind of also on their own little wing. So they're not super mixed in, but they are both in Pritchard and sharing that space. Um, Dr. Lester, if you can help me on the next one too. Yeah, I, so Digirati, I, yeah. Yeah. I okay, so, yeah. Okay. So Digirati just started this past fall. And so this coming fall will be the first time we have both of them living um, in the same building. Uh, so if you are a member of Hypatia, can you share a room with somebody who's a member of Digirati? I, I am not. Probably totally, not. I would say probably not. Yeah. Uh, I do think that they are kind of separated. And then do you know which floors Hypatia will be on in the next year? I am not sure yet. Housing will yeah. probably release that information um, closer to whenever you're actually able to pick a room. Um, but like I said earlier, I definitely knew which floor was which. Uh, before I picked your room. So you should have that information by the time it comes to actually select your room, which for me was in July. And what they have done historically is like the women were on the first couple of floors, 
The next few floors were co-ed and they put the guys up on the top floor. So they kind of had a little bit of uh, overlap or separation there. Um, Virginia Tech Housing does also have some, I can't remember the, the word for it, rooms, gender neutral rooms um, that you can either request or say, I'm okay with living in that kind of, of space. Um, and I don't know more details about that. Um, one thing I did think of is if you are offered a scholarship through the College of Engineering, now there are other scholarships that are outside of that, like Pell Grants and things, but if you are offered a College of Engineering scholarship, you will be required to live in um, Hypatia or Galileo or Digerati. Um, and the reason that we do that is that we know we've studied it the data scientifically that students that that live in the living learning communities and have that support, we actually have um, higher GPAs, better retention rates, both after freshman year as well as the um, you know after four years. So it is a requirement um, that if you get a scholarship, you must live there. The one exception is if you are in the Corps of Cadets. Um, it is a requirement that you live in the core buildings if you're in the Corps of Cadets. And if you are in the Corps of Cadets and you get a College of Engineering scholarship, you will live in the Corps of Cadets building. Um, another thing that people ask, uh, the Honors College. Honors College has both residential and non-residential options. So you can be in the Honors College and still live in Hypatia or Galileo. You do not have to live in their um, living learning community in Hillcrest House. Yeah, a fun statistic that I just happen to know, um, our general college of engineering retention rate from the first year to the second year is 86%. And I believe in Hypatia and Galileo, uh, that number actually goes up to, I think, 98% currently. So that is just kind of the difference that support can make, um, even though obviously uh, with an 86% retention rate, we're not trying to weed anybody out with those first year courses, um, but those extra support resources do make a difference. Uh, in picking a room, do you see a blueprint of the floor to know where the rooms are, or is it just randomly choosing? I think I remember seeing some kind of blueprint, but I don't totally remember. I think I did see it, but I wasn't sure. I'm not sure exactly where I found it, if it was on the housing website um, or it might be different for Pritchard as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I am not sure. <laughs> not totally <laughs> sure. That um, yeah, it's been, it's been a few years for me, um, but I was able to kind of have an idea of at least which I think I knew kind of which side of the building I was on. Um, yeah, if that helps at all. I think I was able to find a floor plan, but it was a lot of internet digging. But you are able to see which room you're clicking. So hopefully if you can find a blueprint of that, you will be able to see where that room is. Um, You're also welcome to just unmute yourself and ask a question as well. And just so everybody knows, next week our speaker will be Perry Martin, who is the director of the Digerati Living Learning Community. And again, this past year was our first year, um, just comparing sizes. Digerati was 40 students this year. It will be increasing in size this coming year. Um, it would be a maximum of 80 this upcoming year. Uh, and just, I know that um, it is certainly out there and many people who have parents who attended Virginia Tech know Pritchard was known as the party dorm. Pritchard holds about a thousand students. Next fall, the seed LLCs will take up well over 800 students, somewhere between eight and 900 of those thousand beds, which means it immediately will go from a quote party dorm to a very serious academic dorm simply because of the students that are in there. Um, and my understanding is, is that Pritchard, I have to admit, I haven't been in Pritchard yet. 
um, that there are a lot of spaces in there that Hogue Hall, which is where we're currently housed, does not have. Um, so we're actually looking forward to, you know, there is a class, there's gonna be, is or going to be a classroom in there, lounges, um, Emily may know better what's in there, um, but for anyone that has concerns about the space itself, um, we will become Pritchard. So that reputation will immediately disappear. Yeah, uh, there's a classroom space in Pritchard. I have some of the information since I've been helping to facilitate the studio move from Hogue over to Pritchard. So getting all of our equipment over there. Uh, but we will have that entire studio space ready to go in the fall. Um, there's a classroom space in there, and I think they are considering holding the fall seminar for Galapatia and or Galileo and Hypatia students um, in that classroom. So you actually won't have to go across campus at all. You can just go up a couple flights. Um, so that'll be very convenient. And then there's a lot of smaller office spaces as well. And I'm not totally sure what we'll be using those for yet, but I think one of the general ideas is to kind of use them as focus spaces for certain topics um, or certain kind of smaller communities within our own. So I'm not exactly sure what they'll put in there, but there's definitely a little bit more of that uh, within the dorm. But it'll be really fun uh, adjusting to the new space. I will also put up um, this slide real quick. So this is my contact info. If you have any further questions, I'm happy to connect you with uh, maybe somebody who lived in Galileo. Um, so we have a lot of students who are still with us that lived in Galileo their first year, as well as some of our Galapatia instructors who would be happy to talk to you about more of what the class is structured like. Uh, if you have general questions about SEED, that's our SEED email um, that you can always reach out to. And again, I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, so during Hokey Focus, can we tour Pritchard? I am not precisely sure, but I do know that often when they are doing dorm tours, Pritchard is one of the dorms that they do highlight um, typically. So I would tentatively say, hopefully, um, but I would say that you have a better chance of touring Pritchard during Hokey Focus than you would of touring Hogue. I'll, I will say that. I do know that during Engineering Open House this year, um, we do have tours coming through the studio if you're interested in seeing that space as well. Um, so that's definitely something to be on the lookout for. It happens in about two months. Yeah, they, uh, well, they, they, pick, oh. they pick a dorm or some dorm rooms to showcase and which dorm it is. Again, we, we don't have any control over, um, you know, th those are private spaces. So it's not like we can, you know, for safety and privacy reasons, we can't just have, you know, everybody walking everywhere during hocus ho hokey focus. So there, there are typically, there are designated sort of showroom dorms um, where people have agreed and people can get in and see what a dorm room looks like. Um, the uh, housing has done a good job. If you Google a particular dorm, you can see the outside of the dorm. Uh, they will typically have pictures of what a, a typical room looks like within that dorm. So I would go ahead and, you know, Google Virginia Tech, um, Pritchard Hall, um, and they'll probably have additional information about what the rooms look like. I'm low key trying to Google this next one because I still don't know the answer. I um, I would I mean, in Hogue, the mm -hmm. studio space is air conditioned, and yes. I would say because of the equipment that's in there, which can generate heat running, um, I really believe that the studio space in Pritchard will also be air conditioned. I think I, to my mind they have to have it air conditioned just for using the equipment safely and properly and the, the comfort of people using the studio. Um, and then I also know that our large lounge in Hogue is air conditioned. And I would say that that is pretty consistent across other dorms. Um, I'm not 100% on the ones in Pritchard, but almost every other dorm that I've been in has had air conditioned lounges. So I would say that that's something you could probably anticipate. Yeah, I would, again, same way I would yeah. guess that probably those larger communal spaces will be air conditioned as well. Um, like Hogue, Pritchard is one of the dorms on campus that 
is not air conditioned. Uh, and the reason you know, people, you're the College of Engineering, you know, it's what Virginia Tech's known for. Why don't you have the premier dorm? Well, at Virginia Tech, dorm prices are determined, you know, the, the facilities determine the, the dorm price. Um, Virginia or SEED is about um, making sure that underrepresented, underserved, low income students. Um, have equal accessibility. And so we have made a conscious decision to put our living learning communities in those dorms so that we are not adding a financial burden to many of our students where finances are can already be a considerable issue. Um, you know, Emily, I don't know if you lived in Hogue, which was then Lee, your first year, the feedback that I get from students is, you know, you and your roommate need to bring a box fan, stick that in your window, you know, the first week or two in the fall, the last week or two in the spring. Um, we are in Blacksburg. We are, you know, a couple thousand feet up in the mountains and you should be fine, but you may be able to speak better to that. Yeah, it really was not that bad. Um, everybody freaks out about it, but I would say that it was not something that really affected me. Um, I don't know. My dorm was on the third floor, so I was right up in the middle there. I don't know if it was maybe hotter on the upper floors or something, but I will say that my number one life hack, um, was having one fan blowing out the window and one fan going in. So that really kept the air circulating and we never had any problems, uh, but like Dr. Lester said, it's really the first couple weeks in the fall, the last couple weeks in the spring are really the only times you have to worry about it getting too warm. Um, and after that, you're right in that nice, you know, fall season. It's it's pretty cool down here, a little bit, a little bit of a breeze. Um, and yeah, so it's it's not too bad. I wouldn't I wouldn't panic. Are there any final questions for this evening? Again, if you think of something later or you're watching the recording later, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, check my email as much as I can. So I will keep an eye out for any extra messages. Well, we've got about, we're 10 minutes of seven. So um, I will give Emily and myself and all of you 10 minutes back. Um, I'm sure Emily has lots of things to keep her busy. Like I said, next week will be the Digerati Living Learning Community, and um, Perry Martin, who's the director, will be on to talk about that particular program. So, you know, join us again. You can kind of compare it, ask questions. There are some similarities, but some differences. Um, and again, I don't see any other questions, so I'm going to uh, wish everyone a great evening and hopefully see you back a week from today. Thank you very much for coming out. Uh, feel free to reach out. Thank you.